Now let's have a look at the trailer control valve. Right here is the trailer control valve. The function of the trailer control valve is to allow the trailer brake to be applied every time there is signal coming from the either the service brake or from the parking brake. Now there are three circuits. There is a control circuit one, there is a control circuit two on the lower side, and there is a control circuit three on the middle side. Control line one with the line 41 is controlled by the service brake circuit number one. As you can see right here, there is 41. Four represents control on air brake system. So line 41 is connected to the foot brake valve circuit one and line 43 right here line 43 is connected to the parking brake valve and line 42 is connected to the second circuit of the service brake valve or the foot valve if line 42 is pressurized the trailer brake will be ordered to apply if line 41 is also pressurized this regulator trailer control valve allows the trailer brake to be applied. If line 43 is depressurized, if line 43 is depressurized, the trailer control valve allows the trailer brake to be applied. Now the trailer control valve allows the trailer to be applied by passing this line. This is a line coming from the four-way circuit protection valve. If you follow this line, there is a line coming from the four-way circuit protection valve right there that will apply, supply compressed air. So compressed air will come this way, will come this way, follow this line, and then it will be introduced to the trailer control valve input. This is the trailer control valve. Right there, there is a trailer control valve input. Right here, you can see the trailer control valve input is there. Now, if service brake is applied and line 41 is activated, the trailer control valve will connect this green line to the discharge, to the trailer coupling. If line 42 is pressurized, the trailer control valve will also connect the input line from the compressed air supply to the trailer side. If line 43 is depressurized, if pressure is removed from here, the trailer control valve will allow compressed air to be supplied, ordered to the relay emergency valve of the trailer control valve. So this is the principle of operation. So the trailer control valve is the one that will allow parking brake or service brake to be applied on the trailer. So when the parking brake is when the service brake is released and when the parking brake is disengaged, the trailer control valve will connect this line to the vent. There is a vent on the lower side, depressurizing this line and allowing the trailer brake to be disengaged. Right here we have the handbrake valve or the parking brake valve. The parking brake valve for this particular model has three positions. There is an open position, there is a closed position, and there is a test position. For example, right now we are on an open position. If you pull it to this side, if you pull it to this side and engage it in here, it will be on the closed side. If you pull it further, and hold it in here, that will be the test side. The test side is only temporary. If you release it, it will come to the close side. It will come to the close side if you release it from the test. Let me show you. Now it is on test mode. Now it is on test mode. If I let go, it will go to the close position. So what does it really do? As we have mentioned in video discussing the combination chamber, parking brake will be applied by the spring. It will be disengaged by 
compressed air. So when you want to disengage the parking brake, all you have to do is apply pressured air from this tanker. It will it will be it will be admitted into the parking brake valve. And when you want to disengage the parking brake, when you want to disengage, all you could do is you supply this compressed air, pressurized air, it will be supplied to the combination chamber. Following this line, it will come to the foot brake combination chamber. It will come to the rear combination chamber, and that compressed air will compress that tough spring. When that tough spring is compressed, the slack adjuster and the push rod will be pulled to this side disengaging the brake. So, parking brake will be disengaged by sending compressed air to this parking brake chamber. So, whenever you disengage the parking brake, this green line will be pressurized. Therefore, the parking brake valve will send pressurized air from the input side to this line 21 to the control the discharge will go to the combination chamber. If you want to apply the parking brake, if you want to apply the parking brake, when you apply the parking brake, this line, line 21, will be connected to line 3. Line 3 is a vent. So the pressure that is in this line will be depressurized. It will get depressurized when this line is depressurized, when this line is depressurized, there is no more compressed air holding the spring to this side. So the spring will now relax and act on the push rod to apply brake. So when this line is depressurized, it means the parking brake is applied. In order to do that, all we have to do is pull this to this side from the open position if you take it, if you pull it and bring it to the closed position, this function will allow air from this side to be discharged and vented out, allowing the parking brake to be applied. The parking brake will also control the trailer by this line. This is line 22. Line 22 indicates output to the second circuit. Line 1 is an input. Line 1, right here is, is line 1. Line 1 is an input to the parking brake valve. Line 22 is an output to circuit number 2. 3 is vent, as we have discussed earlier. So, when the parking brake is applied, we have also depressurizing this line. This line 22, the yellow line, that is coming in between these two yellow lines is a trailer control valve. The trailer control valve, when this air, when this chamber is depressurized, will allow the trailer valve to be applied. We have discussed when depressurizing this will allow the trailer brake to be applied. Pressurizing this will remove brake from the trailer. So, when parking brake is applied, we will depressurize this line also. Line 43 will be depressurized. Depressurizing line 43 will allow the trailer valve to be engaged. So the trailer parking, the trailer brake will be applied. The third position on the hand brake valve or the parking brake valve is a test position. This is a spring loaded position where you can only keep it manually. Otherwise, if you release it, it will go back to the closed position. This is the test position. So what is happening on the test position? On the test position, parking brake of the track will be applied. Parking brake of the trailer will be released. So this will allow you to check if the parking brake of the track is able to keep the vehicle stationary in case there is a problem with the trailer. 
because the trailer parking brake is always applied by compressed air. The trailer brakes are applied by compressed air. Should there be a problem with that compressed air, will the truck be able to keep the entire truck and trailer assembly stationary? That is what you are going to test. So when this parking brake valve or hand brake valve is kept to the test position, line 21, which is going to the truck combination chamber, will be depressurized. Line 22, which is going to the trailer control valve, or which will indirectly control the trailer, will be pressurized. When this is pressurized, it will release the brake on the trailer. When this is depressurized, it will apply the parking brake of the truck. So by doing so, you will test whether the truck is able to remain stationary or not. So keeping this assembly on the test position, it will depressurize line 21 and pressurize line 22. When line 22 is pressurized, it will allow the rear brake to be disengaged. So this is how the three position parking brake valve or hand brake valve operates.